It could be argued that Turner is the greatest landscape painter of all time. He emulated the great 17th century masters, both in Italy and in the Netherlands. He also experimented with art as emotion, landscape as emotion. So many of the works that you see in this exhibition show the tumultuous anger of nature, but the great serenity and sublime, serene sunsets. He was also the greatest English watercolourist. This is quite important because watercolour was very much a part of British art. The English were known for their watercolour landscapes and he triumphed as well. Britain embraced seascapes and marine painting as part of their genre from the late 17th century. Turner is the greatest seascape painter in British history. This show in Canberra really covers, I think it would be true to say, almost every aspect of of Turner's work. He painted landscape, he painted history. If we think about what Turner meant by landscape, it ranged from studies from nature, studies of real scenery, right through to completely imaginary compositions, historical compositions. He painted seascapes, marine pictures. He painted ancient history, modern history. Turner was a prodigy, really. He was recognized as a, a teenage prodigy. He became very successful very quickly. He was already identified before the turn of the 19th century as really the leading young artist of his generation, the one that everybody wanted to collect. Every big collector wanted a Turner. He became very successful very fast, but as his work changed as his style became more inventive and more progressive and ran further and further ahead of contemporary taste, a kind of a change set in and by the 1830s and into the 1840s he'd become a very controversial figure who really divided opinion and people found it quite hard to keep up with the advances in, in his style. I think Turner's reputation has many aspects. I mean, in, in, in Britain, he's seen as a kind of national painter because he paints so many themes and subjects that are so close to national history and national life, things like the Battle of Waterloo, the Battle of Trafalgar, all these subjects Turner painted. He painted great beauty spots, subjects like Richmond Hill, the picture behind me that are sort of classic English scenes. So he's seen as a kind of representative of the national culture. In terms of art history, he has a rather different role because the advances in his work, particularly in his interest in color and light and the increasingly impressionistic, impromptu way that, that he was painting in his later years, um, proved to be very attractive, not so much in Britain, but, but in France and then later on in America. One of the things that comes out in this exhibition is the extraordinary range of subject matter. And another thing that will immediately become clear is the change of palette, the change of color. The early pictures are often rather dark and somber, but by the time one gets to the late works, they're absolutely singing with color and light. It's as if the window has been thrown open onto the world and the sun has been let in and there's this great transformation that, that happens. One of the things that really sparked that off was the experience of European light, particularly Italian skies, for Turner to really appreciate how light can light up a picture. Uh, he had to go abroad. I hope that people might appreciate that Turner was an artist who was trying to see nature and light, atmosphere, the world around us as it actually is.
in all the themes that Turner covered, there are certain characteristics that all these have in common. He wanted to open them up in a new way and let fresh light in on them. So he's both a very traditional artist in many ways and also an extraordinarily innovative one. He's an artist who often at the same time is looking both backwards and forwards. It is the largest Turner exhibition that's come to Australia with 110 works. We're so grateful for the Tate to allow so many of their great works, including the largest pictures, not only Lent, but the largest pictures he ever did, to come out to Australia. They're very fragile and we're very grateful for the generosity of the Tate.